Where is he made at? Don't tell you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jerry. Hi, I'm Tiffly. Hi, my name is Xiao Wei. Hi, uh, my name is Guan Hao. Hi, my name is Jolene. I'm a product developer from Mighty Jax and we're here today to answer all your questions. Before we begin, do look out for Mighty Jax Insta Stories for more question posts and we'll do our best to answer them in the future. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Question 1. Craziest sample that you have seen so far, I think it will be the mermaid first. Because of the, the amount of like crazy details and transparency of this product itself. For me, it will be the smoke Calo Vera by Bush Loxin. It's a porcelain piece and it's really special because the flowers are actually hand sculpted. So this was one of the most difficult pieces that we have ever done so far. And the craziest ones is the stuff that there's a lot of things to check. <laughs> like F1 has like a lot of stickers, all the different logos, the names, the numbers. Yeah, that, that one is crazy. And also because there's like so many of them. The first product that came to mind was a Chisune mask. The brief required their product to be in two separate positions and then still be able to mount. That's why like eventually we derived at the solution using mixed medium which is a uh, consist of polystone, ABS and vinyl. So this daybreaker is one of the crazy samples that we had to deal with. There's a lot going on. There's the transparent part, the translucent part of it. And also because this figure is not symmetrical, so there's a lot of balancing that needs to be worked out. So yeah, I think I'm quite proud to say that we managed to get through it, this whole sampling process. What's the hype with vinyl toys? Oh. I also don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, now I know there's a hype, right? <laughs> Vinyl art toy movement is like a, a lower barrier of entry for artists to try to get their artwork out there without doing paintings and stuff because normally paintings, the pricing will price a lot of people out. So I would say like having this option of this vinyl art toy movement helps to amplify the voice of the artist in terms of reaching a wider demographic. Yeah, I guess that's why like there's a lot of hype. Uh. I mean, vinyl as a material, it's for one, it's hollow, so less material needed compared to like injection molding for like PVC and ABS. It's also more ductile. That, that means it's not so fragile. It's not so brittle. It's more malleable. So it's also very versatile. Can create lots of shapes. Yeah. So that's the good thing about vinyl toys. Can y'all do more crystal toys? Well, I mean, like we could technically, if there's a demand for it, then why not? Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always yes. More than being able to do that product in a specific material, I, I think there's a lot of consideration uh, like for example costing, design limitation and also like what's the user user experience going to be like. So we had two crystal pop pack, a, a translucent one and a black one. For crystal, to be honest, it, it, it's quite tricky in the manufacturing, especially of such size. So. Mm. Probably, I can suggest this to our creative team and we can look into more crystal toys. Why are some toys more expensive than others? Again, there are several factors. The first thing that comes into play, obviously, is like the cost of goods. Huh? Most of our Mighty Jack toys, actually, we collab with artists, we collab with licenses. So all these are actually part of the things why the items are more expensive. For example, if you are purchasing a licensed product. Of course, you have to think about these are big brand licenses that everyone knows. Another thing is how exclusive the toy is, like the uh, production quantity. So definitely, if it's a very exclusive toy, the unit cost will be higher also. Another thing is the number of materials needed inside that one toy. Another thing is the number of parts that are needed to create the toy. Most of the time, they're not like molded in one mold and then they just come out like that. If it's very complex, they need to be like separated out and things like that. So definitely more parts means more cost because more mold then it's also the type of material like the type of effect also whether you want GID like glow in the dark different types of material also affect the type of mold needed to make it so it's not just like material cost itself but also the mold cost will change according to the type of material so yeah lots of factors man I would think that size contribute the biggest how do you QC your toys? Eye power. <laughs> Just joking. There's like two parts of it. La. 
there's the before production when you need to make sure the samples are good so that in production the end result is also good so that is like the pre-QC but important to ensure quality so this is the part where we go sit down together with the designers and then look through all the samples and then touch the product to see the product and then we have artworks that we have to compare with they pass the Pantone test and the stability test and then also the NFC checking uh, to make sure our toys are all able to be authenticated yeah and then at the end of this whole production Process. We use third-party QCs, basically look at every single piece and then make sure that it is the same as what is specified and make sure that the there are no flaws also like dirt marks or blue marks. And then we also have our colleagues in China who also drop in and supervise this process as well. So yeah, there's a quite a rigorous QC process set in place. Yeah. Hardest toy to mm. make. I would say every piece has its own challenges. The translucent ones, because there's a lot of air bubble issue. Another thing is if it has very if it's very difficult to balance, that's another toy that's very hard to make. Other than the previously mentioned Kitsune mask, I think maybe a close second would be uh, this transparent colorway for B more. This one is not just a toy, but it also acts as a table lamp. For this, the brown development don't just end on the aesthetic part, but also making sure the factory side also need to figure out a way to do that PCB board inside. I think it would have been the clock two. Optimus Prime. There's the lighting effect over in the eyes itself if you guys have the toys. Yeah, so there's a plug-in then you can like make the toy light up and the details on the product itself is also very complicated. How to sculpt in 3D Blender? <laughs> we are not the 3D team. This is production, we're not creative team. So actually you all should watch the video of the 3D. <laughs> Ask MJ. Do you all hand paint your toys? No, not us. <laughs> The factory do <laughs> hand paint the toys uh, depending. So if there are some smaller parts which cannot be reached through so-called mass manufacturing techniques, then yes, we do have to hand paint them. The tough part about hand painting is the brush stroke will be very visible. Generally for blind boxes, because they are mass produced on a very large scale, they are usually all sprayed. It wouldn't make sense to have a guy there painting. If you spray normally, you need to use a spray mask. But then with spray mask, right, normally it's being used for like vinyl, PVC, kind of like those toys that require more tooling. Lah. But then for polystone, you cannot really use a spray mask because normally you a polystone product is much heavier, so it cannot be held in that spray mask because normally a spray mask is a very thin film of uh, copper. La. There's pet print, there's water decal, there's hydro dip. You can even consider like chrome plating. La. Every like color application methods got their own limitation also. So why do I have to wait so long for my pre-orders? I think uh, we get these questions a lot. So for toys, right? You need to go through sampling and we are very particular in terms of the detail there are also like stages like approvals from our licenses and then at the end of that there's also the logistic side of things where they have to arrange the deliveries i cannot say it's not tough to wait that long for a toy but then do know that we are putting in our effort to make sure everything that we deliver is like well thought and then there's purpose behind it once the first art toy is made how do you make copies of it thanks <laughs> You're welcome. Photocopy much. <laughs> you can print. <laughs> Usually we start with a 3D printout of it. So uh, if you watch the 3D artist video, you know that we make a 3D sculpt of it. And then this sculpt can be printed out into a 3D figure. What factories will do is that they use this 3D figure to make a mold. And then they use that mold to make another mold. <laughs> We have the master mold, of course, when we run into the mass production, we need to have a few of the production molds so that they can run in batches. Yeah, basically, how you make so many of the same thing is you just use molds. Resin up toys, what kind of resin do they use? Polystone? That's the most common one that is being used right now. So basically, the generic term is poly resin, or what we call here polystone. Mm. These are what we commonly use. It's just like plastics. You have ABS, PVC, vinyl, and all kinds of plastic. So it's just a different texture, different hardness. Where is it made at? Don't tell you. <laughs> uh, we have manufacturing all over the world, uh, mostly in Asia. That's what I'm going to tell you. Question 9. I wanted to buy a life-size Verstappen but RIP wallet. Um, my condolences. 
life size is life size, so definitely the material cost will increase a lot. So you can imagine volume of material required is like on steroids. There's also only a few ways whereby you can try to do it. And it's not just the material cost, but also the type of material. Because they need to use fiber reinforced polyester, which is a more expensive material. In order for the life size structure not to warp or like fold in on itself. Uh, every single piece you can treat it like a sample cost. Even the logistic cost involved is also quite high you know, for a product of that size to be delivered to you. If you think that it's really um, RIP for your wallet, just buy it once in a lifetime. That's enough already. You probably only need one life size. Yeah, you only right. need one. You don't have that much space, <laughs> right? What were your favorite toys to create or work on? For me, because um, actually I like a lot of the licensed products. So that's why um, I handle in a lot of mass market toys. I think it will be one of those ceramic toys, Samurai. Yes, that was my first uh, ceramic toy itself. Yeah, and it's our first invention chamber. Ron English and Jeff Staple, Green uh, basically. That was one of the first few projects that I worked on that involved such big names. Uh, that, I mean, they still are big names and then like getting the opportunity to work on them is like a privilege. Uh. I like the toys with punny names. So like a wood awakening or like a picky eater. I appreciate the humor in them better. So yeah. Any exciting projects coming up? Uh? We got another outpicking series coming up soon. Uh. Maybe you cannot say too much. Uh. For those One Piece lovers that you guys are waiting for the next wave. Uh... Uh, okay, yeah, then stop there, we stop there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, license to approval. There is Stranger Things coming up, and there's also some sports stuff coming along, and uh, more tasty treats. Yeah. Stories are made with love and curiosity. I have to agree lah, I have to agree because like for every department to come together and then deliver like a product, I think that has to contain love and curiosity lah. Curiosity has always been part of us to understand more how toys are actually made and also we try to explore what are the possibilities that we can create. And hard work. You realise that the creative team has to do a lot to create the designs so it's a lot of hard work. You do have to add a spice of creativity as well. Yes.